Hey guys, it's the Redstone Wizard here again, bringing you another episode of Let's Learn How to Do Some Redstone. Today, we are working on, no, not a sugar cane farm, observers. So, I just uh, did this quick setup, put up the tick rate just to show you pretty much stuff that you would be able to do with just observers, utilizing observers. Yeah, simple sugar cane farm. But yeah, you wouldn't get that. Ah, they wouldn't grow this fast with ah, and with the standard uh, random tick speed. I just increased it just to be able to do it this fast, just to show you guys how to do it. I'll show you what it is. So, observers are a movable power source that detect changes. I did explain it in the. Uh, video where we're talking about the uh, power sources and there's certain things that it can detect and certain things that it can't detect. Anything that gets placed in front of it one way or another, like the sugar cane here, will be able to activate it. Them getting moved in or uh, uh, moved from one point to another will activate it. So, placing blocks and placing, well, uh, placing blocks, things that actually have a state change are key things. So, for example, if I, let me get my inventory open, we'll grab an observer, I will take a repeater and a piston just to show you guys that how it works in a block okay I'm gonna place the observer this is the side that the power comes out of this is the detection side so I'm gonna place that on the detection side if you look we have an arrow up here so the arrow will always point towards the power side place a block place a piston and we'll place a block now I'm just going to turn this to another tick the observer detected that change and was able to do that and it will do it with a lot of things so there's so much possibilities with this like if I place this here click it click it it's going to change states you can actually and the interesting thing is you can actually get state changes based around signal strength with observers. So like if I just, because this is a good example right here. I'm just going to take this, place one there. As soon as it grows, it's going to first off immediately detect the state change. end and actually it doesn't work too well with the comparators because they will have a consistent power but dust on the other hand we'll just break that and you and notice how fast this is pulsing and that is because it is detecting the state change in the dust so it's a changing of the states now most people use the uh, most people use observers for one of two things either farms like this and I do use them in uh, my tree farms you know, for some parts and then also they use them for flying machines and that is because the movement creates a pulse now Back here, I've got two shulker boxes, a green and a red. The green represents what crops can be detected with the change of state, while the red are ones that can't be. Now, let's take a look at what can be detected by the change of state. We've got the villager crop farm, uh, the villager crops, seeds, beetroots, carrots, potatoes. 
those <coughs> can be uh, those can be set up for you can actually detect the change in their growth rate. Okay, good to know. Useful? Not really. Some of them they have seven change states and they can actually skip. Sweet berries can be detected. Okay, that's pretty good. Why? I have no idea. I wouldn't use it for anything. <laughs> I wouldn't care about detecting sweet berries. Then we've got melons and pumpkins. Now, melons and pumpkins can be detected when they grow. When the melon and pumpkin plop onto that dirt, they can get they can get be they can be detected. Which then is pretty much when you have something set up to break them. Kelp, bamboo, and sugarcane? Well, obviously, because I got sugarcane here, I can change this to kelp or even bamboo if I need to. Now, the ones that can't be detected by the observer, for the crops at least, we have netherwort so your netherwort farms you'll have to manually do them visualize and whatnot set it up it can get a little tedious then we have the pumpkin and melon stems I couldn't get stems in here so I uh, just put these in there more for visual representation an observer on bedrock cannot detect a change in stems as in, when a pumpkin or a melon grow, the stem will change to the point where the melon and pumpkin will be placed. We can't see when the stem changes via observer. So we are stuck with targeting where the observer sets. So. And you can do, and like I said, it's changing of the states. Now, if I felt like it, I could stick an observer onto the here, because as this gets items put in, in fact, let's just uh, do this. It's going to go, it's going to collect. Comes back, and if you notice, the piston's pulsing. It it's noticing that it's getting items and therefore changing the state. But if I open it, it doesn't change it. Now, if I take a hopper, let me uh, see if I can grab it from that angle. Nope, let's come back here. If I take a hopper, place it down, put an observer on its face, and now I'm just going to place a block here. Let's get ourselves a torch, not a torch, a lever. Obviously, a way that we can tell when it goes off. We're going to put a lever here, and we're going to activate and power that hopper. It works for all the redstone components. Except for note blocks. At least on bedrock. Java, you guys got the note blocks. We don't. So you place a note block down, you power it, it's not going to transmit. It, the observer will not detect the signal. If you're building something and you want just a signal detection, I uh, either use like redstone lamps, uh, Hoppers, droppers, dispensers. Some, uh, you can even use pistons. It's all based on how you set it up. And that is literally the only thing. Observers, fun block to build with, fun block to use. You can actually even use it in just decorative things. You can set it up for uh, hands-free things like I did with a minecart using a piece of string and the whole point behind the observer was budding a block update detector 
In other words, if a change happens, we want to be able to notice it. Bedrock doesn't have proper buds. In fact, we don't even have buds. But we have a way to detect block state changes. So, observers, useful, extremely. But, uh, oh yeah, and I forgot to mention one thing. They actually produce a one tick pulse. Whoop. Which, if you guys come over here and look, actually increase the tick rate. Because these do not increase the length that they hold. And that's because I don't want... You know, because I need a little longer pulse and I need this longer. Yeah, it's... It's... This is the same on Java as it is on uh, Bedrock. At least the uh, tick rate for that. It produces a one tick pulse at the state time of the change. So I can actually force it by placing a block here. Removing it, moving it moves. It's it can be useful. It can be troublesome figuring out how to counteract it. But you guys, I hope the you find this video informational. I'm really enjoying making this series, helping, letting people understand how to start working with Redstone, or change the way that they work with Redstone. I'm going. I'm done with all the components now, so I'm going into a little more of the advanced things, how to set things up. So, if you guys like the video, leave a like. If you have questions, comments, leave them down in the comment section. If it's a really big issue, you can join my Discord. I'm fairly active on there, and I'm able to answer questions. If I can't answer them, I have a team that also can uh, that might be able to answer. We're a nice, calm community, um, and if you want to support me, subscribe or join my Patreon, link's in the description, but you guys, this is the Redstone Wizard, enjoy building.